Gentleman's time has expired. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from California, Mr. Sherman, for two and a half minutes. Unfortunately, our colleague, distinguished ranking member, uh, was unable to be here this morning. Ask you my cons unanimous consent to enter into the record the statement of the gentlelady from New York. Without objection. Cryptocurrencies are a crock. What social benefit do they provide? They help terrorists, criminals, fraud, gambling, tax cheating. It hurts the U.S. government in two ways. Our ability to have the dollar be the chief means of international finance is what has underpinned our ability to impose sanctions. And uh, What social benefit do they provide? But they're harmful, and they're harmful in one other way, and that is, uh, and I'm going to mispronounce the word, uh, synergy. Synergy. All the revenue obtained by a feudal lord from his vassals. Synergy. Uh, synergy. The revenue obtained directly by minting coin difference between cost of metal and face value. Is the benefit. The inflation tax that the U.S. government gets by issuing currency. It's a tax that nobody talks about. Seat marriage. The revenue obtained by the difference between interest earned on securities acquired in exchange for banknotes and the costs of producing and distributing those notes. Everybody got that? And they're popular with those who have read Atlas Shrugged and Fountainhead and believe that these are the new uh, canons uh, the new divinely inspired documents of our age. We live way beyond our means with a foreign policy we can't afford and an entitlement system that we have encouraged. We print money for it, the value of the money goes down, and poor people pay higher prices. That is a tax. It's a transfer of wealth from the poor and the middle class to Wall Street. Wall Street's doing quite well, but the inflation tax is eating away at the middle class of this country. We need to get rid of the inflation tax with sound money, sound money, sound money. What social benefit do they provide? Now, I know that, this bit, the, uh, uh, that these cryptocurrencies are popular. They're popular with guys who want to sit in their pajamas and tell their wives they're going to be millionaires. And then finally, we've got these initial coin offerings deliberately naming themselves to lie to the public and convey the image that it's like an initial public offering. They stole the intellectual property and trademark of legitimate investing and applied it to a fixed, fraudulent gambling scheme of no social benefit. Aside from that, I think it's a good idea. Perhaps we'll have another hearing after some major terrorist event uh, financed by cryptocurrencies, and I yield back. Because that gentleman yields back. I am curious, and anybody can answer this, will a, a governmental central bank in any system recognize and utilize a, a cryptocurrency? It seems to me the only way that there is going to be an ultimate legitimization of, uh, of a cryptocurrency is whether a central bank somehow recognizes it. Mr. Chairman, I think several countries in Europe, for example, and in Latin America have already thought about and already considering digitizing their currency. So I think that that is a, something that may very well happen. I wonder, though, where, whether to at least... But, that, but that's a little different. That's a governmental-created currency versus a non-governmental currency at this point, right? Well, that's, that's, that's right, but I'm not, I, I wonder what the difference is, right? I, it, once we've moved away from the Bretton Woods Treaty, right, and once we have cur cur currencies floating freely around uh, w w with each other, I, I think in one sense what we're, complain what we're worried about is that Bitcoin isn't um, backed by a state actor, and that's about it. Okay. Our we would see a government struggling for survival as it realizes it, it no longer has a means to collect, ca collect taxes. You know, if I'm abstracting a bit, our economy basically looks like this. You have the bottom layer of people doing all the work. You have an abstraction of people doing all the work called corporations on top of the people doing the work. You have a, another layer called banks who siphon off money off of corporations. And at the top you have governments. And governments are essentially taking money from the, bottom from the work of the bottom layer with the help of corporations and banks. This is how governments are feeding themselves.
When Bitcoin does to banks what email did to the postal service and renders banks largely irrelevant because Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer currency, I don't need a bank to, to give you money. Then governments can no longer rely on today's systems to feed themselves. That's going to be a shock. And bureaucrats are going to say, but this can't be. We must have this. We must have this. We must regulate. And somebody's going to point out that, you know, the, the problem is that this cannot be regulated in the first place. And bureaucrats are going to be, then we must regulate it. But it cannot be regulated. It would be trying to regulate gravity. They are in for a world they don't have tools to manage. <laughs> and I, for one, are going to bring out a very, very big bowl of popcorn to look at that.